We've got to be in agreement on what matters most to us. Uh, marriages that don't thrive are often yeah. because what matters most to me is not what matters most to you, and so we're isolated. Enthusiastic encouragement. Encouragement, yeah. I, I, I just remember when I was in in high school, I ran uh, cross country one year in high school. I was not very good at cross country. I was middle of the pack as a runner. Um, I would start off and I'd get about halfway around the track and I would just be dogging it and I would, I'd be slow. And yet when we'd come back near the starting line and the cheerleaders were there and they were going, come on, Bob, you can do it. I, I started to get a second wind and I started to, I picked up my pace and I, I ran a little harder and a little stronger just because somebody was cheering me on. Yeah. You, you think about professional football players. I don't know how much you watch professional football, but never, ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not <So> at all. <laughs> on, on a Sunday, these guys are out on the football field. They're being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars to play yeah. this game. And there'll be a big play coming up and they will be lifting their arms up and telling the crowd, make noise, cheer for us. We'll play better. And I'm thinking, we're paying you a million dollars. Go, yeah. go give us your, but they just know when, when in your ear, you're hearing somebody cheer you on. Yeah. There's something you, you kick it into overdrive a little bit. And when we're doing that for one another, when we're saying to each other, I believe in you, you can do it. You're really good at this, man. You, you did an amazing job there. There's something about that affirmation that is so life-giving to the other yeah. person. The, the, the Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. We have to ask ourselves, are we using our tongue to give life to somebody else? Or are we tearing somebody else down? Are we tearing yeah. our spouse down with our tongue? Yeah. So I think enthusiastic encouragement is very important. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I don't know, this is just from my observation. I think that women have a harder time doing that and I feel like there's more scripture that talks about women tearing down their house than it, there is about men tearing down their houses, uh, well, because and, and it's easy for us to, to do that. Go back to what you talked about with Emerson Egrich and his book, uh, Love and Respect. Mm -hmm. So a husband is longing for respect. Right. He, he's desperate for his wife to say, I respect you. The, right. the cheerleading is a part of how you say to your husband, I, I value you, I honor yeah. you, I respect you. His heart longs for that. Yeah. And so I think there's a lot in the Bible about a wife tearing down because she's more naturally predisposed not to withhold respect sure. until you earn it, and prove it to me, and then I'll show you respect. Yeah. That's a pretty high bar for a husband to have to, to try to clear. Yeah, yeah, almost impossible. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, and the last one is uh, have a common conviction. Yeah, and, and this is where I would say we've got to be in agreement on what matters most to us. Uh, marriages that don't thrive are often yeah. because what matters most to me is not what matters most to you, and so we're isolated. I'm pursuing one thing, you're pursuing something else. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not on the same page with these things. And of course, as, as Christians, what we should be pursuing is the heart of God. We should be pursuing uh, our, our understanding, getting to know the Lord, growing together in grace, um, our, our commitment to our local church, our commitment to being missional and reaching out to other people. Those are the common convictions. And in, in a marriage between two believers, when we're not seeing things eye to eye, we can say, okay, what do we think the Lord wants here? What does the Bible yeah. have to say about this? And it gives us a, a way to bring our marriage back to something other than just, I want this. Well, I want that. And, and we're divided that way. So having common convictions having something that we keep coming back to and saying, we're going to build our marriage on this. Marriages that thrive have that in common. Yeah. What about marriages that don't have common convictions? Because of course that is often the case, you know, and often you have mom who's a believer and dad who's not, or dad who's a believer and mom who's not. Right. And that, oh man, I mean, that taking that back to the parenting question, that can cause all kinds of conflict in a marriage because now you're on two completely different roads of life. So how do you, is, how do you work through those issues? Boy, it, it's so hard when, when we're in a situation where, uh, uh, we're unequally yoked and it's why the Bible yeah. warns us against becoming unequally yoked. But when you're in a spiritually mismatched marriage, um, yeah. you're not coming to the same, uh, source in terms of where we decide right and wrong or, or our values or where we're going to go. This is where I would say in that situation, look for 
where you do have commonalities and agreement, mm-hmm. there are going to be things that you can agree with. So uh, uh, a believer and an unbeliever in general are going to believe that lying is wrong. We right. don't want our kids to lie. So let's find those things that we can build uh, our marriage on together and at the same time just be praying for God to change the heart of the spouse who's an unbeliever. And yeah. I've talked to people who have been at it for decades with an yeah. unbelieving spouse, uh, but I've also seen God change the hearts of those spouses over time yeah. uh, as as a wife or a husband just lives out faithfully in front of yeah. that other spouse what, what it means to live for God. Homeschool Insights is sponsored by CTC Math. If you're looking for a great online math program, visit ctcmath.com and try it for free. For more great homeschool inspiration and resources, listen to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 